There is nothing better than eating a juicy fruit in the summertime or biting into your favorite vegetable at the dinner table. But what we sometimes forget is that some of these fruits and veggies have changed completely thanks to farming. The wild versions of these products looked and tasted a whole lot differently. Let's check out some of the fruits and vegetables that look totally different thanks to farming. First up is corn. The evolution of corn into the delicious vegetable that we know and love today started many years ago, around 7000 BC. Natural corn started being domesticated and it looked completely different from the corn that we know today. It looked more like a little bush and it was much smaller than now. Pictures of the corn of that time remind me more of a cereal grain than the plant that we eat off the cob. The corn then had more of the texture of a raw potato. Then it started to move towards the corn we know today. It was bred from the teosinte plant that was at the time was barely edible and really not tasty but they could pop so it is thanks to that that we have the wonder of popcorn about 10,000 years ago farmers in the area that is now called mexico noticed that some plants of maize tasted better and they were bigger than some of the others that's when selective breeding came in they kept kernels from the desirable plants and kept planting them in the next season resulting in better quality plants every year thanks to the those early farmers in a lot of effort we now have corn that is 1,000 times bigger than it was at the time. They're also much hardier and easier to grow. Next time you eat corn on the cob, spare a little thought for those farmers efforts. Number two on the list is banana. Imagine eating a banana and having to spit out seeds all the time. That's kind of what you had to deal with if you eat the early ancestors of the bananas we have now. It started with a Musa acunaminata. These plants had a long thin stem and could be used to produce a fruit that has no seeds. But the fruit at the time had hard, big seeds and not a whole lot of taste when eaten. Then it was bred with Musa balbusiana, and eventually they resulted in tasty plantains. But they still didn't have as much taste as the bananas we have now, and they were much harder to peel. Thanks to hybridization and farmers that kept on working on those delicious beauties, they eventually became super sweet. They also started to become the shape that we now know in better Best of all, they became super easy to peel, making it a convenient and treat packed with nutrients and coming in at a very own packaging. What's your favorite snack to make with bananas? Share any yummy hints with us in the comments. We'd love to see them. Number three is delicious peaches. A little berry with a big stone that doesn't have a lot of fruit is the first fruit that pops up in your head when you hear that a peach. Not quite, right? But a few thousand years ago would have been. Peaches have changed completely. Not only is how they look, but how they taste and every other way you can think of. They were domesticated around 4000 BC and at the time were the size of a cherry. They looked very similar to a cherry at the time too, the stone that was around 36% of the fruit. That didn't leave a lot of edible flesh. It also didn't have the soft skin we know now, but rather a waxy, tough exterior. Doesn't really sound pleasant, but that isn't even the strangest part. The taste was completely different from the sweet, juicy taste we have today. In Instead, it was earthy and salty. Many say those peaches tasted more like a lentil. After selectively breeding those for thousands of years, they eventually gave us the peach of today. They're a massive 64 times larger than the fruits of yesteryear and 27% juicier and also a lot sweeter. Now, the only question is, when will they make a cherry that is as big as a peach? Number four is eggplant. Eggplants have a pretty long history and they come in a wide variety of shapes and colors. There is white azure purple and even yellow but they were more of a round shape and they had the plant stem connected to the flowers but eventually they used selective breeding and got rid of the spines and made the eggplant much bigger into the oblong and purple vegetable that we can get in the grocery stores today they're much easier to cook with and use almost all of the vegetables number five the watermelon we know how the first watermelons look thanks to a painting from the 17th century painter by Giovanni Stanchi in it he paints a watermelon that looks very different from the modern melons that we know today. In the painting, it shows a watermelon that has massive pits, and there are six triangles that have pie-shaped pieces that seem like little pieces of ripe watermelon separated by the white flesh. The black seeds in the painting make it seem like a ripe fruit, even when some have said that it was unripe or unwatered, but a lot of scholars have argued that it was probably just how the fruit of the day looked. Farmers since then have bred watermelons to have much less seed and be full of juicy red fruit. It is much less white
white parts and is filled with the red placenta that is delicious to eat. I don't care what the meat of the watermelon is called as long as I can have some on some warm summer days next to the pool. Are you hungry yet? Sounds like we have a lot to be grateful for thanks to the farmers of old. There are still some of our favorite fruits and vegetables on their way. How do they look and taste hundreds or thousands of years ago? How do they get them to look so different now? Which fruit surprised you? Let me know in the comments. Let's get back to the list. Number six is the carrot. Bugs Bunny loves them and many of us love them too. The bright orange crunch that is packed with flavor and vitamin A. They've been around for a very long time but they might not have been as healthy as they are now and they weren't as orange. Historians believe that even ancient Greeks and Romans grew carrots but they looked more like the wild carrots that are still around today. Others believe that carrots come from around the 10th century when they were grown in eastern Turkey. But what we do know is that they looked more like the average root vegetables that we know now than they do like modern carrots. Think more of a ginger root that has been freshly dug up. They were really thin with a forked root and they were purple, like some of the wild carrots today and also white. History was strange for the carrot because at different times people preferred different colors. Like we prefer the orange carrots of today, farmers and breeders bred carrots until they were much thicker and into the orange carrot of today. It's the color that's connected to the vitamins too. Scientists have actually been able to figure out the exact carrot gene that helps to give rise to carotenoids. Those are the parts of the carrot that give them their orange color. It's also part that is full of vitamin A that makes a carrot as healthy as it is. Number seven on our list is apples. There are loads of different apples available today, but most of them look pretty much the same. And that is the same thing that happened from the first apples to now. They looked pretty much the same as the apples we know today, but their flavor is much different. Apples were smaller then and were much juicier now, but the biggest difference is that apples then had a very sour taste, unlike sweet apples now. Surprisingly, people still have access to some of the ancestors of our modern apples. High in the mountains of Asia, there are Asian wild apples that many of our modern apples were bred from. It's like an apple forefather living in the mountains. And lastly, there's the tomato. I know they say knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. But I could probably eat tomatoes with anything. I adore them. And there's also the matter of some people still considering them a vegetable. But besides all that, it had an interesting history since many people believed it was poisonous. Early tomatoes were tiny and they were green and yellow. But not many people ate them since many died after they did. Turns out the acid in the tomato was pulling the lead from the pewter plated the aristocrats ate out of, killing them from lead poisoning. So if you want to eat a tomato, make sure your plate isn't laced with lead. Which fruit or vegetable is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.